Hello, <laughs> welcome to Octopus Do. I'm Christian Ross, joined my, by my good friend Nero here. And we have the coolest tool to show you. It's brand new. <laughs> There are actually two of these here at two different sizes. We have the small one and the large one. What is it? This is the Weaving Goddess Weaving Loom from Juliana Avalar. And it is the newest in her line of weaving looms for jewelry making, but this large one can do textiles. So uh, wall hangings, decorations, um, I made a scarf on it, which I'm going to show you how to do that. That's today's project is how to make this scarf. But the smaller one also works for jewelry, just like you know and love. Like I made this really cool bracelet on the small one. Love these things. Take a look at these. So not only are these functional tools, I really like them. I think that they are works of art even, and they're made out of wood, which is just such a lovely material to work with. I, I love the natural feel of it. Uh, this design is Juliana's signature goddess design that she's had forever. And uh, I really like the way it fits in your hand and it's a beautiful piece of art, as I said. Come, They come with stands. So when you're not using these, you can actually display them uh, in your craft room, on your mantelpiece. It's really something very nice to have. The thing that's really cool about these, and yeah, guys gotta forgive me, I don't know all the nomenclature yet, for all of the pieces, like uh, the, the combs here. And um, I mean, they look like needles that they have a hook on the end. And you know, I'm gonna find out all about that. I've got some time scheduled with my good friend, Ann Page, who knows all about knitting and weaving. And so I'm going to learn all of that and I'll share all of that with you. So I'm just going to be referring to these thingamabobbers right now. <laughs> But the really cool thing about these is that while you're weaving, you can look down while you're working at your jewelry, which, and you're working. The thing I find really cool about these is while you're looking down and you're pouring your energy and you're pouring your intent into being creative and making beautiful things and making beautiful designs, you, can choose a message that's imprinted on these to really concentrate on it. It almost becomes kind of a meditation. Uh, for example, is this one right here. I am creating my life. Isn't that cool? If you're looking down every minute that you are making something and you're pouring your heart into that intent, then you're going to believe it. You're going to start believing it. So not only is this a great tool, but um, as so many of you know, by being creative, uh, it, it really seems to have just a healing effect on your spirit and soul. And I think that these really honor that. And so Juliana, I have to say to you, great, great product. Now, I talked about how these are made out of wood. So you can decorate these, you can paint them, you can uh, color them, you can do all sorts of things. I did that with this little guy or little girl and I'm going to do it to the big one too. I just haven't done it yet. I found that the wood is very porous. And so if I used any kind of marker or a thin paint, then it kind of soaked it up and spread that out. So it feathered out and it didn't give me that uh, color that I was looking for that, yes, I understand color outside of the lines, but I was trying to stay in the lines here. And um, 
So I tried something that I found worked out really well, and that's colored pencils. So you can see on the smaller version here, I actually colored these in with colored pencils and I used just the basic 12 pack that you can pick up anywhere. And I'll show you a little bit of how that works. So I'll show you on the small version, which is one of uh, these holders here, which beautiful design on every single piece. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm just amazed. If you're looking at the chakras, these are designed after the, the whole chakra concept, then they go in the rainbow colors, which are, uh, if you remember from school, Roy G. Bibb, red, orange, um, Roy, why? <laughs> red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. If you start out with a red, that is um, the If you start out with red, then that is this first chakra point, which is right above the flower at the bottom. So I've got my red pencil and I just color it as you would just really anything, a coloring book. And the harder you press down or the more times you go over an area gives you a darker result. So. I'll show you what this guy looks like at first, and then I'll give him some color. I'm just pressing lightly on the wide areas around the triangle there. So that gives me a lighter rose color. Then for the petals, I'm going to press harder. That gives me a more intense red. And it's as easy as that. So you can choose to add color to these any way that you like. They're really a beautiful design. So have fun embellishing it as well as working with it. Definitely. So. I promised you a project. I'm going to show you how I use the large goddess loom to make a long scarf. So let's get started on that. Just had to get a little bit organized there. So I'm set up here, ready to show you how to make a scarf. The yarn that I'm using for this is a velvet yarn and I will send the link to that below. I actually picked it up at Joann's and it comes in a few different colors, but it's this bushy thick yarn that happens to match my new velvet shirt. That was complete coincidence. I actually found the shirt after I found the yarn, but you know, love how things work out. Check this beautiful yarn out. It's this periwinkle color and uh, it's just lovely. Now for this scarf so far, you see all of this yarn? <laughs> This was a full skein. I haven't even used more than that. That I've used maybe half of this skein and it is a 10 ounce skein. So you could probably get two or more or make a really long scarf or go wider than I did on my project. But um, so far, I don't think I've even used half of this. And the scarf I have, I'll measure it here in a little bit, but so far it's pretty big. I had to look up online how long to make scarves and everyone says, of course, different things. And the real answer is however long you'd like to make them. But um, one standard measurement that I was told is the stretch of your arms all the way across. So I almost have that which if I have that going, it's going to be about 60 inches. So pretty cool, a lot of yarn here. I'll show you the weave close up for the result and then I'll show you how to make it. Look at that. Now I took the concept for this from those circular knitting wheels that you can make toboggans out of, you can make double scarves and things like that. It's a wheel that has all these pegs sticking up that you loop around and then you pull 
the yarn over the loop that you made and you just keep going around in a circle. Well, the thing about this guy, or why do I call my tools guys? The thing about the large weaving <laughs> goddess is it's not circular, it's a straight line and there's no hole for the finished product to go down through it as if it were one of those circular knitters. So what I did is I ended up knitting along a straight line and then I make a turn and I go back the other direction. So it makes it very easy. And then it's only one ply because if you were doing the circular knitters, then this would end up being a tube. So this being one ply, of course, you also get more bang for your buck as far as your yarn is concerned. You're only going across once and that's your width and you're not doubling back over and using double the yarn. If you want a big, thick, heavy winter scarf, then those are great for that. I like this because it is more airy and it's kind of a fashion scarf, but it's, um, I, I just love the way it turns out. And you know, sometimes you don't need the big heavy ones. This is pretty like it is. Anyway, I talk a lot. Let's get started on this project. I'm gonna move these guys out of the way, these girls out of the way, and um, cause I don't wanna knock them over and we'll get started. For this project, I only need to use one end of the loom. You see my scarf is still attached on this side because I'm going to show you how to finish it off. But I'm going to show you how to start on this side. The first thing that I did is because I wanted to use larger yarn with a bigger hole, a bigger weave on this, then the pegs on the end, I'm wrapping one loop of yarn around two pegs. And so what I did is I came back through and I colored in this time with a marker because I wanted to go all the way across the peg. I wasn't trying to get in any specific lines and I wanted the color to be darker so I could see it. And I colored two pegs and then left two blank and then two and then left two blank. And that gives me a visual clue of what I'm wrapping around and I don't miss anything and just do one set of two is one loop. So that's why these are colored, which is my own visual clue. It's still cool, it's still pretty. I can't wait till I get this whole thing colored. Okay, so to get started on this, I just have a bit of the yarn that I've taken off the skein. And I'll show you how I make that first loop. It's kind of a, um, a sliding knot um, or a sliding loop anyway. So you take your little bit of yarn and you just make a loop like so. Take the tail end, because you leave about three inches there, wrap that around that loop that you just made and pull it through where your thumb is, like so, and tighten it up. So now you have this shape and this will slide. So I'll stick my thumb in here and I'll hold the tail just to show you how it slides. You pull on the main bulk of your yarn here and that slides. So you have an adjustable loop. Now, one thing that I'm going to tell you when you're weaving, don't pull this really tight. This is not a strength test. First of all, you don't want to break the pegs off of your tool. And second of all, the harder you pull and the tighter you make the loops around these pegs, the harder it is going to be to move the yarn over where you need it to go. Now, I've got my loop and I'm going to put that over the first two pegs right here. I'm just sliding that over with the loop to the back side and this tail and the knots to the front. I'll tighten that up a little bit there. And again, there's some play. Like if I hold this up, you can see daylight through there. So I'm not pulling it really tight. All right, I'm gonna get this tail out of my way. So I'll throw that down here and look, there's a groove perfect for holding that down and out of the way. Now I need to loop around all of these pegs. So what I do is I take this side that is toward the bulk, not my tail, like here's my little tail. And I've gone around these first two 
So I take this and I go down past, like you see the two that are not colored. I go down in between those two. I go around those two and back up. And I'll get close so you can see what I'm talking about. There you go. Then I'll pull it a little bit snug. I'm not pulling it tight. Remember, I'm not pulling it tight. I go across those two blank ones and you see the next two color ones. I go down between the color ones and the blank ones. So that goes down that way. Underneath and back up. So you see, I am just looping around two pegs and back and around two pegs and back, around two pegs, back. Anyway, um, I'll show you what it looks like from the back side here and the front side so far. So I'm going to continue this and I'll hold this up here so maybe you can see from this side what I'm talking about. So I go around these two and down, underneath, and back up. Around, down, underneath, and back up. And every once in a while, I'll stop and make sure that all my loops are pushed down toward the goddess there because you don't want the loops coming off the end before they're supposed to. <laughs> Here's my little secret. Do you see the shape of the goddess here? I absolutely love sitting on the couch with my feet on the ottoman and then I hold the goddess up between my knees right here and it holds her at the perfect height for me to sit back, relax, and just loop. <laughs> All right, so you're going down two and around, down two and around. That's easy, that easy. Go all the way across until you get to the end and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, I've gone all the way across. And one thing that you'll notice when you get to the other end, if you're going two by two by two, the very last end here has a single peg and then it has a wide point. I just stop before I get to those. So these two are going to remain empty the entire time just because this gives me an even number and I don't have to worry about finagling the end or worry about different sizes or anything like that. So I stop here and I've gone around my last two pegs and have my bulk sitting up here. Now what I do is I have to turn around and go the opposite direction. Oh, one reason why we have to go back in the other direction is before we can start uh, doing the knitting part, which is pulling the loops over each other, we need to have two rows. So this is considered the first row. Now we're going to make a second row. The loops are going to go in the same direction, so they're going to have the loop part in the front and the crossed over part toward you. The problem that you run into when you're going in the opposite direction is these first two. Because if I just go in the opposite direction, because you see, I've made this first loop here, and here's where my yarn comes out, 
If I were to just start going back in the other direction, this side would only have one loop on it, but you need two. So here's the little trick that I came up with, which is you're going to take, you're going to take your yarn here and see, you're going to twist it in this direction and fold that loop back over those last two, like so. And then pull that tight. So that gives you your second loop. So what you do is you take your yarn, you twist it so it crosses over each other or over itself. Then you lay that loop that you twisted over those two. Then you go back the other direction. So when you're going back, go around the next two and down. And come up next to down come up and you just go back through that line go down and around down around down and around There we go. Okay, so I've gone one direction and then come back and gone the other direction and made it all the way to the end. And so I'm going to take this end that is my bulk and I'm going to hook it into this last hook just like I did into this last slot, just like I did my little tail here. Now, here's the exciting part. We're going to start weaving. We have to take the bottom row of loops, which are the first ones that we did, and we have to pull them up over the top row, which is the second one that we did. And that is the key to weaving on this loom. These wonderful little hooks that come in this kit, I found are perfect for reaching in and grabbing that first row of loops and pulling it over the second. Now, since I'm using this fuzzy yarn, it might be a little hard to see. And if that's the case, then let me know in the comments below and I'll be very happy to do a follow-up and uh, try to get something a little bit more clear. I just love this velvet yarn. So what you're going to do is you turn the loom to the side where you have the single loops. Before, the side that you've been weaving around has been towards you. So flip it over. So now you're looking at the side that has the two rows. So you see on this, you've got two rows of your yarn. So what you're going to do is you reach in and grab that loop on the bottom. Like so. And you see there's a little hook on the end of this lift it up and pull it over without pulling that first one off. You've got to pull it over that first loop. So if you need to, hold your loop from the back side, pull it up over one peg, over both pegs, just like that. Okay, then you slide that down, make sure it goes back down. Then go to the second one and do the same thing. Grab it and pull it over and push it down. Grab it and pull it over.
like so. And you continue doing that until you've done the entire row. When you get through with that, all you have to do then is turn around and put a second row of loops on top of the now single row that you have and continue. It's that easy. All right, push everything down. Now, don't be afraid. When you get to the other side, if you look at it and it looks a little wonky, it's okay. All you have to do is you just pull on it a little bit to straighten it out as you go, but it's really going to straighten out after about three or four rows, because then you have the strip that you're going to be able to pull down and straighten out as you go. Show you what that looks like on the other side. Blech. So fast forward a little bit, um, a few days or I don't know, a few hours, depending on how fast you weave, and your scarf looks something like this. So when it starts getting all bunched up here, I like how this part of the, the tool, the comb here, kind of keeps everything out of the way. So while this is going, you just pull and it straightens and evens everything out as you go. And then you're ready for the next row. Say you get your scarf as long as you want. How do you end it? I can show you that too. So to finish this off, I take a length, and this is the part that's still connected to my yarn, and I'm going to cut it. I've got my scissors, and just cut some of that. There we go. Set that aside. All right, now I'm going to pull each loop off of the tool and I'm going to run the end of this through that loop and that's going to seal everything off. You know what? I'm really, I'm going to use this tool again as a needle this time. So I'll just thread this. There we go. And start pulling off my loops. Just pulled that up a little bit so it's easier to grab and run this through and actually go through the loop like I'm sewing. And again, don't pull too tight. <laughs> My friend Nero is gonna help here. Come over here. Cats and yarn, what are you gonna do? <laughs> All right, pull up the next one here and just sew through. And do that with all of the rest. I'm keeping my finger in the front so that I don't pull off more than one loop at a time. And the last one. All right, 
come back over to the scarf and make sure that it's not all bunched up. So I'm just gently pulling on it. Cool. Now, when you get to the end, tie, go ahead and loop back around and tie that in a knot. So basically there's the loop. Go through that, go through itself and pull. There we go. And there's the end. Now to finish this off completely, I'm going to go back and add tassels to the end. So that's going to be exciting. All you have to do for that is cut several lengths of leftover yarn and then go back and you take at, at least two of your leftover yarn pieces, go through the loop and tie it in a knot or loop it in on itself and you'll end up with great tassels. But this is my scarf for now. That's so soft and wonderful. Very happy with that. There we go. I am accessorized. <laughs> Thank you for joining me here on Octopus Do. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe. After you click on the subscribe, you'll get an icon that will let you have notifications anytime we have new content. If you liked this video, then don't forget to give me a little thumbs up there. If you didn't, I'll take the thumbs down, but definitely either way, leave me a comment below in the comment section. I love reading those. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoy the new tool the weaving goddess uh, in different sizes. And once you have these, I know they're brand new. Now you know, go make something. <laughs>